This coffee has been sitting out for hours and it is stone cold. So, lately, I've been thinking a lot about this. Obviously not this, this, this is a sticker, but the original piece that was photographed to make this. I'll put a picture here, maybe. I think maybe it's because I've been doing chain stitch for so long. Kind of sick of chain stitch now. So maybe that's what got me thinking about this piece because this piece is nothing but backstitch and satin stitch. A nice, lovely, different world. I have been wanting to make this piece again pretty much since I finished it. It was the first big piece I ever did. I mean, in retrospect, it's not that big. Yeah, this piece over here is a lot bigger. For embroidery, it was a pretty big piece. Um, and it was the first bigger, solid, kind of detailed piece that I had ever done. And it's really kind of what like transitioned me from embroidery as a hobby to being an embroidery artist, to being okay with calling myself an embroidery artist. And since then, I've done a lot of bigger pieces, which that one kind of was the springboard for all of them. And since finishing the French Dispatch piece, I haven't really done anything big, anything that big. So I think I'm gonna redo it. Not redo it. The first one was perfectly fine. It was great. It was beautiful. Turned out really well. Very proud of it. But I keep thinking that I'd kind of like to make it again. Just kind of choose the colors again, know what I'm getting into going into it. I think I have better materials now. I'm better at tracing. I have a bigger frame that I could use. So I'd like to make it again and I'd like to make it bigger. I don't know how much bigger. I think at the smallest, I would want it to like barely fit inside the Q-snap frame I have, which I think would mean it could be 16 or 17 inches tall. But I'm also kind of thinking, what if I go bigger than that? So I think in deciding how big I'm gonna make it, part of it is going to be the frame that I have and how I'm gonna sew it. And the other part is going to be looking at what is the biggest section in this pattern? What is the biggest I'm willing to sew that section with satin stitch? Because if you go too long with satin stitch, stuff starts getting gapey, like it's not a good idea. All of that to say, I literally haven't done anything to start on this, like absolutely nothing. I haven't looked at the pattern again. I haven't looked at my frame sizes. I haven't chosen fabric, none of it. So I'm actually filming this intro prior to doing even the slightest thing on this project. So I have no idea how long this is gonna take. That's the big thing. The original piece, 11 by 14, I think was the in size. No, that sounds too big. I think it was 11 by eight. That one took me two and a half months to sew, during which I was mainly working on that. I think I only did one or two other small pieces in that same amount of time. Like the French Dispatch one, that took me nine months to sew, but I was working on a lot of other projects at the same time. I was not solely picking up that piece every single time I sat down to sew. The first Beauty and the Beast piece, I was pretty much picking this up every single time I sat down to sew with the exception of like one or two commissions I had to do. So it, I was like full-time job kind of sewing on this thing and it still took two and a half months. I have no idea how long it's gonna take, especially because I still don't know what size I'm making it. I can't dedicate all of my time to it, I'm not, going to, but I think I'd like to try, I'm really bad at doing this and I've literally never succeeded before, but I think I'd like to try to time myself, like kind of clock in and out every time I'm working on it and actually see at the end what the hours that I put into it were. Yeah, we'll see if that works. Cause again, I'm really bad at that. I like to be able to just pick things up randomly and not have to like think about it and plan. Yeah, yeah, this is a good choice. I love a long project. Who doesn't love a long involved project that you go into knowing you won't be done with for months? That's it, that's all. That was my chat. I'm gonna get to work, I guess. Okay, so there's essentially two versions of this piece and I've put both of them in 
the color guide that is for sale in my Etsy shop. This is the one that I actually used the first time. Um, it has, of course, the thinner lines, which is why I chose it, because these seem too thick to actually trace onto paper. What we run into is that whoever created this left out a lot of detail. So the roses down here, the crown, um, the circles and the flowers up here on top, there's just a several places where they've gone with a very simplified detail. This one, on the other hand, has a lot more detail in it, but it just has the thicker lines, which is why I didn't originally choose to use this, because I think especially shrunk down to the size that I sewed it, it would have been really hard to trace and to see all the details because the lines themselves were so thick. But if we get a nice close look at this, Look at the difference in those details there. This is all very specific. The crown actually has all of the dots that are supposed to be in it. You've got the proper shape and all of this over here, up here at the top. This is what those are supposed to look like. They're actually like flowers and not just circles with a line through them. I was still kind of thinking I would need to use both of them and kind of go back and forth. But now that I'm seeing this one printed out, I'm thinking once I blow it up even bigger than this, it should not be difficult to trace. The now question is how big do I make this? I was talking about using the biggest section as sort of the guide for how big I can make this because the biggest section is gonna be the one that challenges the satin stitch. They're both very different shapes, but I would have to say that those two and that one are probably the biggest section on here. These are the pieces that I'm going to look at as I blow it up. What's the biggest that I'm willing to stitch those and still be doing a satin stitch that's not too loose or gapy. So I can definitely do it a lot bigger than this. So the next question is framing. Do I want to be able to frame it and sew it all at once without moving the frame around or am I okay with moving the frame around? And this pile of sticks is what I have to work with. This is my large Q-snap frame. I'm pretty sure they do come larger, but this one is already pretty hard to sew on based on the size, just being able to hold it. Anything larger than this, I think would have to start being an actual standalone frame, something that is set up so that I can pull a chair underneath it, which is on my list as something I would very much to like to have in the future, but do not currently have, nor do I have space for it at this time in my life. So that's just not really an option. So this is the biggest I've got. So we're looking at like 15 inches tall and that's cutting it close because sewing right on the edges of this is difficult. So if I can get it 15 inches tall and it is currently, it's about nine and a half by seven and a half. So if I can get it up to 15 inches tall, the question is, is that big enough? I have printed it. This is right at the 15 inches tall mark, like right at it. So it might be a little difficult to get in this frame, but I think I can do it. Also, yeah, I had no idea how big 15 inches tall would really feel. Like, this is giant compared to the last one that I did. So I think 15 inches tall is definitely just fine. Absolutely fine. I'm gonna do some cutting and some taping, and um, I'll get back to you. Here we have it, the finished piece. All right, is it gonna fit in the frame? I think it'll just barely fit. It's gonna be right on the edges down here, but I think that's okay. It might be a little difficult to sew there, but I'm gonna leave plenty of fabric on either side. So if I have a big runoff of fabric, I can always roll this further up, sew this area, and then take it down while I sew the top part, which I've done before. These are basically my go-to fabric options. I have huge chunks of them because I use them for pretty much any big embroidery piece. Um, this one is just a regular cotton. It's not as thick, but it's still pretty sturdy doesn't really have any stretch to it. A nice snowy white. This one is a cotton twill. I believe both of these actually are cotton twill, which I really like because it's so nice and thick. I like thick fabric. 
Again, it doesn't really have much stretch, but here's my concern. The last time I sewed this piece, I sewed it on fabric that is, you know, non-stretch and it's still stretched because a lot of fabrics that are non-stretch, once you get them in an embroidery hoop and you're tightening them up and you're really pulling on them, um, they can end up having a slight, it's not so much of a stretch as it is a give. So it'll still give a little bit and that can affect things like your straight lines. So I did end up having to redo this part right here on the first piece because the first time that I did it, it sunk way in. So I had to go back and basically restitch the outline and then like expand everything inside to fill it in. And I really don't wanna to have to do that this time. I don't want anything to be pulled. So I'm actually also considering putting interfacing on the back of whatever fabric I use just to guarantee that it doesn't stretch. But regardless, these are my options. Um, I'm taking this one away actually. I think I just wanna do it all on pure white and this is the same fabric as this, it's just cream. So it's either going to be the thinner fabric, which I'm not really comfortable using it because it's sturdy enough for a simple embroidery hoop, but in a piece of this size, it doesn't have a lot for the frame to grip, which means it's gonna be falling in more and I'm gonna have to be retightening it all the time. But if I put interfacing on the back, it could be entirely fine. This is my go-to, this is what I prefer to use. The difference here, Twill has this lovely diagonal um, weave pattern in it, which I like normally, but sometimes when tracing, that diagonal weave can make it difficult to see through the fabric. So let's start by testing see-through ability. That's obviously super easy to see through. I'm just concerned about how thin it is. So let's see with this one, if those lines give me any problem. Hmm. You know what, they really don't. I think again, the design is so big now that I've blown it up that I don't think something like the weave of the fabric would really cause problems. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the cotton twill. I'm still considering interfacing though. I might be cutting this totally crooked. Oh, I am. Okay. Boom. So I was also considering embroidering every single stained glass window from Beauty and the Beast in one giant, gorgeous, and detailed collection. But I watched the beginning of the movie again for color references and, uh, yikes. I had completely forgotten how many windows there are. So we have, welcome, here's the snotty prince, which is already a beast of a window. Then, old woman comes to castle, Prince opens door, woman offers rose, close up on that rose and hand, Prince turns her away, after which we go back to the old woman's angry face again. Then the door is closed on her, transformation and begging, a quick shot of this curse being placed, which interestingly looks fairly different from the rest and like how it was colored and shaded. Then we have Prince hands, beast hands, and finally the incredible landscape window that I mostly want to do. And this is all way before the final happy couple window at the end of the movie, which is the one I have sewn and will be sewing again. So yeah, I might sew more of the windows at some point. I might sew all of them. I also might not. I think I would really need that standalone frame if I were going to. Now that I have this all traced out, now that I know what size I'm doing, do I have a time estimate? First of all, this took me about an hour and a half, maybe a little less, to trace all of that on there. So yeah, it's really hard to calculate how long this is gonna take because on the one hand, it being so much bigger means it'll be easier to sew. 
Um, all the little small details are a lot more clear on here. They're not teeny tiny little things that are just difficult to get a needle in and out of. On the other hand, being so big means that I have to pay attention to some small details. There was stuff in these areas that last time I just kind of fudged because it was so small you really couldn't see the difference. You couldn't tell. This time I can't really do that. There's a lot of little bitty small details around here that I could just see in tracing it that I had never seen the last time I made this because they were so small you couldn't see them last time. So do I have an estimate? It is hard to say. I don't expect to have this done for six months. That being said, I might end up really enjoying working on this and digging into it all the time and it could be done in three months. I certainly don't think it'll take less time than last time overall. By hours, I mean it might. So who is to say? Next step though, I'm going to switch it over to the front of the frame and just make sure that nothing is pulling too weird when I do that. And then it'll be time to choose colors. Okay, so I've got all my colors. We have 93 different colors that I'm gonna be using on this, probably. I'm going to do a single thread black outline across the entire piece and then go back in and fill it in with thread. Since I'll be staring at this piece for a good long time and I'm already thinking about all the other stained glass images in the movie, I thought I should do a little research and figure out who the artist behind these things is. And this visual storytelling through the stained glass is, it's so specific. I'm figuring I can find something on the person responsible for these images specifically. And according to IMDB, a certain Mac George was the stained glass designer. I checked his page and he appears to have worked for Disney animation from 1989 all the way up to 2016, starting as an assistant layout artist on The Little Mermaid and working his way up to visual development on Zootopia. And he has a website, which I'll link below. And you can buy prints of some of his work there, not the Disney stuff. This is the gentleman himself. Okay, so I definitely thought that was it and he maybe was retired now or something, but he has a Facebook page for his artwork where he still actively posts and it seems like he still works for Disney. He's got concept art for Frozen and Frozen 2 and Moana on there, as well as a lot of his own art. So yeah, huge thanks to Mac George for his incredible artwork and for contributing to so many classic Disney movies. I think I may have to go get myself one of his prints. This is a progress update. I might end up making multiple videos out of this. I guess you'll know by the time you see this if it says part one or if it's the whole thing. Because let's face it, I'm long-winded and I talk a lot. I've only gotten this far and it's already a really long video. So I probably could be a lot more brief in these things. I could probably just be like, I'm gonna do this, here it is. Here we're going, now it's done. And instead I'm like, let me tell you every single little thing I'm doing along the way because details are so much fun. I love details. So I've reached the first milestone in this piece, which is also kind of the only milestone other than finishing it because after this, there's just outline and then color. So, ha! I mean, my God, it really does look huge when I hold it up next to my head. I mean, look how small my head is in comparison to this piece. I've erased all of the lines and missed several, so you know what? Just. There's always some lines that you forget to erase. Pretty pleased with it. It turned out pretty well, uh, but here's what happened along the way. So I basically, I did not film this because 
I could not be bothered at the time, which is usually how it goes when something goes wrong. Um, but I got about two thirds of this finished. And by then, like I said before, this is a non-stretch fabric, but pretty much every fabric has a give to it. By then the amount of give had shifted around and my lines on the side, this one was particularly bad, this half was bad, even this one was shifting a bit. Um, they were very wonky. I no longer had perfectly straight sides. I considered leaving it for so long, but when you're gonna do a piece this big that's gonna take this long to sew, to like allow that much of a problem to stay at the very first step, like this is just the beginning of the piece. If I had allowed myself to just leave the sides a little bit wonky and been like, it's okay, I'll straighten it out later, that would have been a terrible mistake. It would have come back to haunt me later on. So I ended up, I ended up tearing out about a third of what I had done all of this so that there was nothing below here, reframing the whole thing, erasing this whole bottom section, retracing it on, and then I went back to my interfacing idea. I didn't use the interfacing that I planned to. Instead, I used a sticky one from um, Sulky, I believe it is. So I stuck a couple of sheets of that on the back so that it would hold its shape exactly where it was. So you can see, I've got like nice straight lines on this now. I'm very pleased with how it worked. That being said, I absolutely hated sewing through it. Like the sticky, thick feel that it gives when you're pushing a needle through it. I mean, it's not like fingernails on a chalkboard unpleasant, but it's not the delightful feeling of sewing through regular fabric. It was just annoying to me. And it was worth it for the outline, but I think when it comes to satin stitching all of the filling on here, if I have to keep going through that interfacing, I think I'm gonna go insane. So I think before I get started on the filling, I am going to tear all of this off. My main concern is that this is just one strand of backstitch over it, so some places may come off fairly easy, other places might pull on the threads, and I don't want to ruin my outline stitches by like pulling them in all different directions so that I can get this off when this would just be helpful to me anyway. I just don't like sewing through it. I am still debating this in my head. I'll let you know. But yeah, so after tearing out a third of what I had done, retracing everything, <laughs> I was a little bit frustrated that night, but honestly not that frustrated in general. I was actually really glad I did it because it looks so much better than it did. Also, I am so happy that I used the more detailed drawing this time. I was not looking forward to going around this crown. I'll show it to you nice and close here and see if it'll focus. Um, yeah, like it's a lot of little circles and all of these roses and everything. This was not the most fun section to do. Also worth it because it looks amazing now. It's going to be interesting filling those tiny sections with thread. The last thing that I wanted to find out before moving on, how long did this step take me? I downloaded a simple clocking in and out app and I was better at using it than I thought I would. So this should be a pretty accurate count of how long it took me to sew this. Let's see how much time it took to just do that outline. And I'm gonna do a little math here because it is split up into four different pay periods. Wouldn't I love to be getting paid for this? So pardon while I do a little math. 33, 38, 48, 56. If my math is correct. I can do simple addition. Not great at math, but I can do simple addition. That took me about 34 hours. Yeah, I'd buy that. So this actually happened way faster than I thought it would overall because it's been, I think it's been about two weeks. 34 hours? It That does not surprise me. I think that's actually pretty decent to do something of this size. So if you've ever questioned why people charge a lot of money for their embroidery or why they should charge a lot of money for their embroidery. 
34 hours of work. And that's not even including the design, tracing, planning, prep, all of that time that went into it. That is just stitching this. Embroidery is an extremely slow and meticulous and detailed art. Consider that the end of this update. Recapping just for myself. It is finished. It took me about two weeks, 34 hours. Had a bit of a mishap in the middle. Redid it, looks great. One strand of embroidery floss, whole thing. Used about two skeins. Still have the sulky interfacing on the back. Trying to decide if and how I will get rid of it before I start stitching. Probably gonna start from the rows in the center using different thread weights according to size. And yeah, I'm really excited to get some color on here. It's gonna be so pretty. At this point, I'm just staring at it. I'm literally just sitting here staring at it. I'm very pleased. I am very pleased with how straight and neat and even the lines are. Ah. All right, I'm gonna go start adding color because why wait?